Hello and welcome back to uh, uh, Vulcan. Hi Mick, I know where I am, I'm not lost. Uh, I'm playing Station Ears. Uh, and yep, we're here on Vulcan here because uh, uh, today we're going to have a look, talk about evaporative coolers. Now you can, well evaporative coolers do work in both ways. Yes, you can reverse them and use them for heating and for cooling, but I've not really managed to be able to generate a useful amount of heat from the heating there. Um, so pretty much all I use them for for cooling is, so um, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. Um, so we'll be looking at cooling. Now I, an evaporative cooler, an air conditioner, pretty much any sort of air conditioner consists of, well, uh, an, an evaporator, duh, it's an evaporative cooler, uh, and a condenser. Uh, now you find things like your refrigerator will have, this works on the same principle, it will put spray liquid into uh, the cooling tubes inside the, the cooling box, which will evaporate, become cold, and it takes that gas once it's evaporated in there, put it through a compressor and which will uh, get it to condense back into a liquid. It will release its latent heat and that will cause it to get hot. And then it pumps that liquid into a radiator on the back of your refrigerator and the panel on the back of your refrigerator that gets hot, that is the radiator for your condenser. And then your liquid, once it's cooled down, gets pumped back into the, the uh, cooling tubes inside your refrigerator. So that's the basically the thing we're going to do. So we need uh, a condenser, an evaporator, we'll need a radiator to get rid of the waste heat, and we'll need a way of exchanging the cooling, the coolant with the uh, whatever we want to cool. Uh, so that's basically, so let's break it down into pieces there so we don't get all overwhelmed with it. So we'll start with the evaporator because that's probably the easiest bit to do because it's essentially built for us right in one of these things here. So we have in evaporation chamber. Now, all we need for an evaporation chamber is, well, basically a liquid, which I've got here, and um, a connection to what we want to cool down. So I have my carbon dioxide there. It is currently cooling down. Um, it should be cooling down to whatever temperature we set on here. Uh, we have a paper pollutant in here. Now to make the evaporator work, you're first going to need some liquid. Now the liquid you choose will depend on what temperature you're trying to achieve here. So um, if one, if we put a, a pollutant, uh, which is what we've got here, we'll find if we want to cool it down to say room temperature, which is about 20 degrees or 25 degrees, we need a 3640 kilopascals of pressure. So we set that there and that should get us about 25 degrees. If you set that to uh, 3500, so it should actually come down to a bit below that. It is, it's working on it. It's got 10 megapascals of uh, carbon dioxide and a huge amount of it to try and cool down. So it's taking a little bit of time and I've just dumped a heap of heat into it, which hasn't helped. Uh, but this will slowly use our liquid, which it is uh, currently using. Uh, it's daytime, so I'm not making any more. It's very slowly using it. So it is ticking down. It's being evaporated in here to try and get that temperature there. We've currently overwhelmed it with the amount of heat we're putting in there, so it's not quite getting down the pressure yet, but um, uh, it's, it's working on it. It'll get there. I could probably need to put another one of them on there if I'm going to dump that much heat into it, but yeah, anyway, it'll get there. we just got to be patient. Um... So now we could have chosen a couple of different ones there. So if we, we also have the cho choice of um, uh, nitrous. Nitrous oxide will also get us to the temperature we want, so 20 degrees there. Uh, if we set that to 1.28 megapascals, that would like to, that would try and cool us down to uh, about 20 degrees as well. And we see that the latent heat on the nitrous is 4 kilojoules per mole. So, um, uh, where the pollutant is only 2 kilojoules per mole. So this one will cool down twice as much for the same amount of liquid. Uh, but I don't have any nitrous, so I didn't use nitrous. Um, I've got plenty of pollutant, so that's pretty much why I chose it. Uh, I think the other option I have is the water. Once again, I can get that down to... 22 degrees, we just have to set it to 12.7 kilopascals and it will cool down to 24 degrees. 
Uh, but that pressure there at 12.7 kilopascals is very low. So the gas doesn't want to evaporate very much at that temperature. Um, so it's not going to happen very quickly. Um, the uh, pollutant, pollutant one well, did have the highest pressure. Uh, so, yep. That one there, so well, with 3.5 kilo kilopascals, 3.5 megapascals versus one megapascal on the nitrous versus whatever it was, 12 kilopascals for the uh, for the water. So uh, I I don't have much water. I don't have any nitrous. So pollutant is the one I've chosen because it has the highest pressure um, at the temperature I'm looking for. Uh, if we look to uh, water. Water at high temperatures, at 300 degrees, it's got a pressure of 2.8 megapascals. So at that temperature, water is a very good coolant. At uh, 20 degrees, it's it's not a very good one. Um, so just got to choose. It will work. But uh, once again, I don't have much of it. And um, it's not very good at the temperature I want to use. Uh, other things like... Um, I do, do have uh, volatiles. Uh, if I squeeze that into a liquid, um, but the highest pressure, that highest temp, that can go to minus 79 degrees. Uh, so that will not do a room temperature cooling. So that is completely useless to try and do room temperature cooling. So um, uh, that leaves us with the choices that we've got. As I say, it's pollutant, nitrous or water. Uh, I've got plenty of pollutant, so I choose pollutant. Okay, so for our evaporator, we need our liquid the one that will work at the temperature we're trying to use. So um, we have our pollutant, which will, up, will be both gas and liquid at 20 degrees. We set our pressure to set it to 20 degrees and uh, let it go. Pump the liquid in there. The gas comes out there once it's evaporated and um, tries to pass that into the carbon dioxide, which is cooling down. Give it a chance. Right, so that's our evaporator. Um, our condenser at the other end um, is just a tank of gas. We pressurize that to um, whatever pressure we need, depending on the temperature. So we've got 102 degrees there. Uh, so once again, with our pollutant, our pollutant at 102 degrees, we've just got to get that down to 4.93. Uh, megapascals and it will start to liquefy. So as long as the temperature temperature here stays below um, the maximum, which is 250, 153, once it gets above 153 degrees in there, it will no longer liquefy. No good for us. Uh, but we are compressing it and it is sitting at uh, 101 degrees. So it is liquefying, producing the heat, then you've got to get rid of that heat somehow. Uh, and there's a couple of ways you can do it. Everything in between is just a way of cooling the liquid down. I don't know what's the best way. I have just got a counterflow heat exchanger at the moment, which may or may not be a good idea. I'm still working on it. Uh, but the important bits are you need a condenser. It's a tank of gas which you compress. You need your reservoir of fluid and an evaporator. You need a way of getting rid of the heat at that end. We'll get to that one as we go. With your cooling liquid here, it is best to have it... Oh, it's getting a bit warm there. It is best to have your liquid, or most efficient to have your liquid, at the temperature or below of what you're trying to achieve in here. So if I'm trying to achieve 20 degrees in there, I want this to be at or below 20 degrees, because otherwise if I pump 35 or 34.6 degrees liquid into there, the first thing it's got to do is cool down the liquid until it reaches the 20 degrees and then it can cool down everything else. So um, by pumping some in, in there that's a bit warmer, I'm losing some efficiency, but um, it's it's getting colder. Give it a chance. It's getting there. As I say, just dumped a heap of heat into it so it's, uh, it's struggling a little bit at the moment. All right, so we want to cool down our liquid as much as possible. Uh, and our condenser will be uh, getting as much heat in it as possible. Because the hotter the, this end is, the more efficient the heat exchange is to outside. 
And the cooler this is, the more efficient the heat exchange is to the inside. So, um, yeah, so that side is easy to do. That end is easy to do. Everything in the middle, um, that's going to be the tricky part. Right, but what we're doing here at the moment is we have a little setup like this. We have a gas, 56.6 degrees, 4.02 megapascals. It is just a gas. It is not condensing, so the pressure there is obviously not high enough to condense it. Um, on the other side, we have our liquid. Once again, at 57.5 degrees, it is yeah, moving backwards and forwards in its state of equilibrium, evaporates a little bit, condenses a little bit. It's doing what it does, but it's sitting there pretty stable at that temperature and pressure. So what we want to do is um, cool down that liquid. So we're going to evaporate the gas from there. And, um, and that will allow it to cool down. Uh, so now we have, once again, a condensation valve, which will allow any um, liquids from here in the pipe, then anything that condenses, to flow into this pipe here. We have an expansion valve, which is this thing here. Now this one will allow the liquid to go directly into this pipe. That's not what we want to do, because um, that will just make the pipe explode. Uh, if you, when you're using one of these things, what you want to do is the liquid to go into there, evaporate in there, and cool that thing down. If we dump the liquid into this side, it'll evaporate in here and cause this to cool down. But we don't. We want to cool down this side. So uh, let's not use that thing. Um, as far as I can tell, that thing is only used for making your pipes explode, uh, which is not good. I suppose you could use that in conjunction with a liquid... A liquid volume pump? That's not going to work. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know why we want to use them at all. Uh, what we need is a regulator. We shall use a purge valve. Uh, now you may have heard the, the old physics problem go around, or chemistry problem, or whatever you want to call it, where they say, is it possible to boil water until it freezes? Uh, well, the answer to that one is, of course, yes, it is. With the trick being that you do not boil the water by adding heat, because that'll just add heat and it'll get hotter, it won't get colder. Uh, the trick is to just remove the, remove the gas. So you draw a vacuum on top of the water, which will cause it to boil and become colder and colder and colder until it eventually freezes. And that's essentially what we can do here. So... We're going to get this to boil um, because it is not at a temperature where it is going to uh, boil, at, boil at that pressure. So if we reduce the pressure, it'll cause it to boil and should dro drop the, the uh, temperature. Now I can drop that back down to zero. It won't get to zero, but we can drop it back to zero. And we find now it is evaporating. Our temperature is dropping down, but also the amount of liquid we've got in here is also dropping down as well. And as the gas is going across to this side, uh, we find the gas is being forced in here. We now have enough pressure in here to condense the gas. The temperature is going up as it condenses. And the liquid is then running straight back into the other side. So it'll eventually reach a point of equilibrium. Because as the liquid condenses on the other side, it's getting hotter and hotter. The other side's getting hotter and hotter. So the incoming liquid is getting hotter and hotter. Uh, so you've got to then balance that out with the amount of evaporation you're getting. And, um, well, long story short, it will eventually reach a stage, reach a stage, state of equilibrium because this is a fully insulated system here. So we none of the heat is being removed. It is simply moving from this side over to this side. So this side is now down to uh, 49.5 degrees and this side is up to 87.8 now this will continue until, well, we either run out of liquid uh, or this gets so hot that it will no longer condense um, or it just reaches a state of equilibrium. And with the temperature we've got here, it will reach a state of equilibrium because uh, that's not going to freeze, which is another way you could do it is freeze it. Because as we said, you can evaporate it until it freezes. Yes, you can. So just be careful about drawing a vacuum on your liquids there because you will freeze them. 
Um, there you go, still working. So this will eventually saturate. This will get so hot that we cannot go any further. So you have to get rid of the heat on this side. Uh, so this is what we have is, I suppose what you call a closed, closed loop system. Uh, so nothing enters or exits this system there. So our coolant will always remain in there and always be part of what we're doing. Now with, well, I suppose with everything, there's pros and cons on this. Um, a closed system, you will have to find another, another way to get rid of this heat because we'll be connecting this to something we want to cool down. So heat will be coming in this side and it'll all be dumped on this side until eventually it saturates and the temperature gets too hot to condense liquid. Uh, so we need to get rid of the heat from the hot side. Now in a closed system, you will need uh, either a heat, heat exchanger on here to get rid of the heat, transfer it to another system, or some radiators to just blow it out into the atmosphere. Of course, to blow it out to outside, uh, this has got to be hotter than the outside. At the moment, we've got... Um, 110 degrees and 405 outside, so I'm not going to radiate that to outside at all. Um, during the night even, it's down to 120, so that's not going to do me much good either. Uh, right, uh, as I say, but the advantage of a closed system is you can use whatever coolant you like. So I could use nitrous in there if I had it, or I could use water in there if I had some of that. Um, uh, the other alternative is to have an open system, which is what I have over here. So instead of uh, just allowing the heat to build up in there, what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of I'm just going to dump this pollutant straight back out of the atmosphere and then just collect some more at night time when it cools down. So uh, I will have a fresh supply of pollutant each time. Um, of course, the downside of that is you're blowing out all of your cool, all of your working fluid there to outside. So you have to have a source of that fluid outside. In this case, there's plenty of pollutant outside. We're on Vulcan. So I can do that and just exchange the gas with new gas as I use it. Um, but that's about what we have to do. So how can we do that? Uh, right, well, let's have a bit of a build and uh, see what we can do. Okay, so what we've got here is we just have an active vent on the outside uh, connected through a couple of one-way valves and a an passive vent on the other side. Now, this which should just be a way of increasing the pressure uh, from this, the atmosphere we bring in from outside. I should just cheese through the window there to do it. Now we find that what's going on outside is too hot. So we should find that nothing will happen there. But the flow of the gas through the pipe, through the different sections of pipe, through these things here, is a bit slow. So we can use that to our advantage. So if we switch that on, we do find that we have 4 megapascals and rising as it fills up there. But it's 580 degrees, so that is above the liquefaction temperature of the pollutant. We can just run a check to make sure we can get enough pressure to liquefy it, which we can. So once the temperature outside goes down, oh, come on, it's almost got to be sunset. Uh, once that starts to go down, it seems to get very hot and then just gets very cold very quickly. Um, so once that starts to go down, it should liquefy. So if we put in our liquid uh, valves, for you and some liquid pipes on the other side we should start getting one um, we should start getting some liquid in here and we shall branch it off and put in a way of cooling it and we're still too hot nice so once again we should put in our uh, purge valve into there and we shall need power for it uh, cutters. Oop, there we go. There uh, we go. Temperature's dropping now, so we should be getting some liquefaction in there now. Uh, yoink. As the temperature in there goes down, I'll dip down to 300 degrees, uh, I think. 
what was it 150 was the maximum for pollutant uh that's pollutant yeah 150 is the maximum once that drops down to 150 degrees you should start to see the pollutant liquefy uh it's just a bit high in there because i've pressurized the system with hot gas during the day which wasn't very smart i should switch that off during the day now once again the pressure in there is still climbing so we've got plenty of pressure in there and as it drops down once we hit 150 it should start to see some liquefaction go on get there eventually and there it goes we're starting at the pollutant to liquefy in here now which gives us liquid pollutant in there and that should be coming through into this side if i switch the uh, actual valve on it'll be coming through this side why does that valve have an off position i've never used it in off position but the liquid is coming in at a 145 degrees and it is immediately evaporating and dropping down to 90 degrees in there so once that reaches a stable pressure in it will stop evaporating and the temperature will start to go up again because the liquid coming in is at 140 degrees um our pressure rises until that stops now uh, we should probably be around about the five megapascal mark again and there we go slowing down so the temperature is going back up again now because once again due to the temperature of the incoming gas that's slowed right down as the temperature goes up that pressure will go up as well uh so there we go so we have the pollutant in there once again the as more liquid comes in it's condensing in here as well uh right so there is our liquid once again it's coming in on this side and we're just going to blow it straight back out again as we as we heat it back up so if i put that down to say What we say so if we put it down to about four and a half megapascals if they suck out anything beyond that uh, we should see the temperature should start to drop back down again uh, it's still coming in very hot so until it stops stops bringing liquid in that one will stay hot uh, but this is an open cycle air conditioner now uh, because any gas that any liquid that comes into here we're just dumping the gas back out I probably should be dumping it out on this side here not straight back into our condensation chamber um, uh, but any gas there, there is no storage of gas the atmosphere outside is where we store all our gas and it cools down by the atmosphere so there is no need to get rid of the heat because the planet itself is doing that for us we're just getting more liquid in as we need it as we use it it's just getting dumped straight back out again so that's our open cycle uh, air conditioner there as a part of a single stage uh, so we can bring it in at 120 if I then go and uh, switch you off it'll take a little while for that to go down in pressure and once that stops bringing in additional liquid uh, okay it stopped doing that so now we should have this side evaporating and dropping in temperature as it is right so that will dry and drop down until it reaches its equilibrium at uh at four and a half four and a half megapascals which uh should be all right four and a half is about there which should come down to about 77 degrees it'll get there but it is now using up our liquid to actually try and cool itself down if we try and cool it down too far it will use up all of the liquid before it actually gets to the right temperature so uh, yeah but anyway that has dropped down to 110 degrees that would be perfectly good to use as a heat sink to hook an air conditioner up to so you don't have to cool it down all the way because uh, i can just hook up a normal air conditioner uh well not to a liquid there i'd have to transfer that into a gas and then uh, hook it up that way uh, but that is cooling down so i can collect liquid all night 
and store it as I have down there and um, use that for my cooling. But that is an open cycle air conditioner. Now a closed cycle one would be where is this was stored in a tank as I have there and recirculated. But I have then have to get rid of the heat that's in the tank. Uh, so a way we can do that is just by putting radiators onto the hot side, but the hot side of mine is not hot enough for outside. So I can actually use another open cycle air conditioner like this one there, which can then cool the hot side down, let's say 90 degrees or whatever. I think this one's going to go down to 77, wasn't it? I can cool, use this via a heat exchanger onto that which will cool down the hot side of a closed system. So then I could use fill that system up with nitrous instead of pollutant and I would not be losing my nitrous uh, each, each time it was used. Right, so what we've got set up here is our closed system loop again. This time we have got nitrous oxide. I had to cheat it in because I don't actually have any. Oh, I'll just use the add gas command to put some in there. So we've got it 124 degrees on that side, 38 degrees on that side. Once again, with our purge valve, we make sure we don't want to freeze it. Because uh, um, if I choose that, take that down to room temperature, uh, we find, yeah, it's got a freezing point there of minus, minus 20 degrees. So um, make sure we don't get it below minus 20 degrees. Um, so we shall put it at uh, a one megapascal and that should try and get it down to about room temperature is 1.16 in there so if I switch that on it should now cool down once again the hot gas is coming in from this side our maximum temperature for the pollutant uh, for the nitrous is uh, 159 degrees so, whoops, wrong button. That will keep going until once that reaches 159 degrees, it will stop condensing and that will be a problem. Uh, if that gets down to the right temperature, it's fine. Uh, but it's working on it. So we have 38.6, uh, 38.5, 126. That's a bit over 80 degrees temperature difference getting there. Once again, the hot gas is flowing directly back into this pipe here. If I switch that uh, off, uh, I find it cools down rather quickly now because I don't have the hot liquid going in. Uh, but this will build up liquid in here and that'll make that one unhappy. So um, let's not do that. It only warms up again once the... <laughs> but this is going to keep going on. It's uh, trying to get there, but it has a build up of heat on this side which it is not happy about. So once again, we've collected our pollutant over here. We don't have much in there. There's only 13.4 litres in there. But we're going to run that through a evaporation chamber. Uh, so once again, we want to set that to uh, about 3,500 kilopascals. That was that'll try and cool this down to about 20 degrees. Oh, let's take it up to about 40, shall we? Um, so that one should take us down to that four megapascals should take us to about 46 degrees so which is much lower than what we got in there so that should be taking it out and I can start collecting it again now if I now switch that on it's probably going to use up all of my liquid there just to pressurize this tank uh, yeah it is that's okay because I can now start collecting more. So all is good. Right, so this is an example of we have uh, an open an open air conditioner. This is two air conditioners, not just one. So this is an open cycle air conditioner which is getting pollutant from outside, squishing it into a liquid, using the liquid into the cooler to cool down the hot side of a nitrous system. So this is, so this, this, the hot side of this has gone from 150 degrees down to 66, 67, and which now allows the cold side on here to get even colder. 
uh, but we're down to 1.3 megapascals. So we're going to get to the point where we don't have enough pressure in there to liquefy any more gas, uh, which means the whole system will grind to a halt there and um, that'll be the end of that. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that's, that's your cooling system there. So that's basically how we work. So once again, you've got a cooling system. Liquid evaporates to cool the liquid down. Uh, you can then use the liquid to cool something else down. In my base, I'm cooling down the carbon dioxide, which I feed to my plants. Um, on this one here, of course, we're getting our pollutant, which we're using to cool down the nitrous, which we're using to cool down the nitrous liquid even further. Uh, once again, we're down to 24 degrees now. So that has allowed, by having a two-stage air conditioner there, we've got it from, um, what have we got, 130 degrees through an air conditioner to another air conditioner down to 22.3 degrees. Uh, so, and that will go down further, but I'm running out of pressure here. Uh, right. So once again, I could have used pollutant in here as well. I just wanted to use a different one in there just to show that uh, with a closed cycle air conditioner, you can use a different working gas uh, to what you've got in other systems there. So mix and match, because if you want to like uh, cool down your hydrogen or oxygen, uh, you've got a point where you just can't get rid of the heat on a planet like this. You're going to have to uh, transfer it from one gas to another gas. So when the pollutant can go down to minus 100 degrees, I think it is. Uh, we are on the pollutant. Yes, we are. So we can go down to uh, minus 100 degrees. And... Oxygen, if you want to liquefy oxygen, you need to start at 114. Okay, so pollutant couldn't get down cold enough to liqu start liquefying the um, uh, oxygen. Uh, um, volatiles, minus 78. Okay, so you could use the pollutant to cool down enough to start liquefying the volatiles, and the volatiles you can then use as a refrigerant which will go down cold enough to start liquefying the oxygen. But you'd have to have a multiple stage there to switch to a different refrigerant gas to each time you want to get down to something lower. Um, but as I say, I'm just trying to cool down to room temperature, and the gases which work at room temperature are nitrous, pollutant, and water. Uh, so they're the ones I'm limited to. So being on Vulcan, I have an easy supply of pollutant, so that's the one I've chosen. Now, as I say, you can go down separate stages uh, from separate coolers to another system and then there to another system if you want. Or I have just done this one in a continuous system. Uh, so I have a cooler up here, which is connected to the open cycle system. Cools down the tank, which lets the gas out. It's also a connection in the middle there, which does allow excess gas and liquids in and out if need be, but uh, I don't know if that helps or not. I'm just making it up as I go along. Um, uh, but our, once again, our liquid condensers, it comes through a stage at a time. It tries to uh, reduce the pressure down to 33.9 megapascals. It exchanges the liquid going in 103 degrees with the gas coming back in the other direction. That's coming out of there at 67. It cools down the liquid a bit further as it goes. So it's 84. It goes in at 104 through the through the air the, the heat exchange. It comes out the other side at, well, less. It then gets evaporated again down to 86 degrees and gets passed through. Exchanges heat with the gas coming the other direction, which is 57 degrees, cools it down a bit further and repeats, does that again and again and again. Eventually gets down to the other end and it is 38.3. Um, the more stages you have in there, the cooler it's going to get. Uh, but you are, of course, evaporating your, your gas. You are evaporating your liquid to cool down the liquid. So um, there is a limit to how far you can go. Uh, but I say this, all this configuration in the middle, it's just um, a way of cooling it down. There are many different ways you can do that. The main thing you've got to remember 
is we need a condenser which causes the gas to turn back into a liquid. You feed your liquid into an evaporation chamber which can then cool down whatever you're trying to cool down. That's 41 degrees now. It's getting there. It takes a while. Uh, we need a supply of liquid. The more liquid you've got, the better. As I say, the cooling ability of the liquid will depend on what temperature you're trying to achieve and what uh, liquid you're using. Uh, so pollutant... Um, pollutant is... Uh, if I push the right button... Is one of these ones here. So it's two kilojoules per per mole to evaporate. So it is not the best. It is, does have the highest pressure, so it works the best. It's probably the fastest one to work as a as a uh, evaporative cooler. Um, well, at this temperature, it is anyway. As I say, water is the highest, um, which comes in at a cracking eight kilojoules per mole but the pressure is very low as you get down in temperature. As I say, the higher temperature range, it works fantastic as a coolant. Um, uh, so nitrous is the second one, they're coming in at four kilojoules, but lower pressure and harder to get. But uh, that's what you've got. Uh, as I say, pick a gas that works at the temperature you're trying to operate at. Uh, you may have to change between gases and uh, and see how you go. But, um, 13.5 degrees. There you go. That's reached its uh, one megapascal, which we set on there. Uh, that is still above. It's still condensing. But that's all good. Okay, so once again, we have a condenser. We have an evaporator, our source of liquid. Uh, same on this one here. We have our source of liquid. We have an open cycle, which is a condenser on the outside, and it just dumps everything there. So we don't have a tank for the for an open cycle. We don't have a hot side tank for a, a open cycle air conditioner. It will just be using the the world atmosphere as the as the tank for the outside for an open cycle. Uh, a closed cycle system will have a tank for the cold and the hot side, the liquid and the gas. And we are just evaporating the liquid to cool the liquid down. Now you can do it in multiple stages or single stage. This is a single stage. That's a multiple stage. You can be as elaborate as you like. Um, but that's basically what you've got to remember. Your liquid is your cold side. Your gas is your hot side. Make sure you're not condensing any gas except on your condenser. So I have a multi-stage one here. But I have to be careful that uh, I'm not getting condensation on this side, which I am getting condensation, because that's going to heat up. Isn't it? It's evaporating. It's condensing there. That means that'll be heating up in there. I don't want that. That's bad. So I have a... Whoop. Yeah, we want more. We want to just increase... Reduce the pressure on that side until it stops evaporating, until it stops condensing there. As soon as it stops condensing, our temperature should now start to drop. Which it is. So that should improve the efficiency of it now that I've actually got it doing the right thing. That's better. Uh, now this side might cool down. Maybe that's why it wasn't working because I was getting condensation on that one there, which is bad. Yeah, now it's cooling down. That's better. That's working better. Uh, but there you go. Uh, as I say, I don't know the best way to do that. That is just a way of doing it. And um, see how you go. But uh, yeah, that's it. Evaporator with a source of liquid will cool down what you're using. Condenser will build up heat. Make sure you've got a way of getting rid of that heat uh, via an open cycle or a heat exchanger or just a radiator depending on what planet you're on to get rid of that heat uh, but that's about the uh, long and short of evaporative coolers uh, so I hope that hasn't just confused everyone um, as I say 
get liquid, put into one of these things, it will cool down whatever's connected to this side. Getting the liquid, that's the trick. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's probably about it. So till next time, happy building. See ya.